And welcome to The Verdict. Kent Myers, uh, once again, uh, flying solo without Mick Cornett, but I do promise you he will return uh, when, uh, in the next week or so. Uh, we're really glad you joined us today because today we're going to talk about something that we haven't talked about before. It's the Oklahoma River, but we're having a, a riverboat captain join us as our guest. Les Cummings is a riverboat captain on the Oklahoma River. He has quite an interesting background, uh, both personally and professionally. We think you'll like to find out what uh, opportunities are available on the Oklahoma River. Uh, we really appreciate uh, tuning in with us, so uh, sit still. We'll be right back. A greener planet, cleaner air, a healthy economy, national security, a smaller deficit, and a stronger dollar. Green jobs, better jobs, energy independence, warmth and light and transportation. These are the reasons Chesapeake champions natural gas every day. see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent Myers uh, filling in uh, solo today because Mick Cornett can't be with us, but we'll be back. Today we've got a, a real live riverboat captain uh, on the set with us, and we're really pleased we do. Uh, to my right is Les Cummings. Les is a, a captain uh, of uh, a Devon boat on the Oklahoma River. Uh, he was raised in a fisherman's background on Tillman Island in Maryland. Uh, grew up doing it with his family. It's been a family tradition for many years. Uh, by virtue of his employment with Wilson Foods. We uh, captured him here in Oklahoma uh, after a number of years uh, in the fishing uh, industry. And uh, he uh, went ahead and uh, completed his education at Southern Nazarene University, where, by the way, he was designated the outstanding student in his uh, graduating class. Uh, he is now employed uh, in the information technology area with the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation and has been uh, for uh, a number of years. But he also, on the weekends and in, uh, as time allows, uh, reassumes his position as a riverboat, riverboat captain and uh, shepherds uh, uh, passengers uh, up and down the Oklahoma River. Les, thank you so much for coming. This is the first time we've had a real riverboat captain on the show. There's probably not too many of us around. Not, not, not at all. Well, uh, first of all, tell us about uh, what you do out at the uh, Medical Research sure. Foundation. Sure. I, uh, uh, again, you mentioned information technology. I've been, uh, actually, I've been the head of uh, information technology at the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation for going on 28 years now. Oh, so my. I've been very honored to uh, work at OMRF. It's a wonderful place to work. And I imagine the, uh, in 28 years, information technology definition has changed a good bit. If, if you don't like change, you don't want to be in that industry. That's for, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Well, what's, what's going on out at the Medical Research Foundation? Well, uh, it's a very exciting time for us uh, at this time. Uh, uh, you know, as far as, as the uh, uh, work that we're doing and, and research, uh, I think it's important to realize that each of us will be at some time or our families will be touched by cancer, uh, Alzheimer's, arthritis, lupus, uh, uh, cardiovascular disease, 
uh, with uh, strokes and heart attacks. And it's wonderful to know that uh, right here in Oklahoma City at the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation, we're working on those problems as well as many other uh, uh, diseases. And uh, uh, that's what makes it uh, so exciting to go to work every day uh, to work with those uh, scientists that are internationally known at the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation. In addition, we have a terrific administrative staff there, uh, and it really makes it a, a wonderful place to work, a, wonder, a wonderful environment. Well, what a terrific reputation the foundation has for all its yes. good work, and I know that it's exciting to be there. Yep. Uh, speaking of exciting, I, I uh, ask you to come on because I became aware of your uh, early year background and then your, uh, your uh, coming to Oklahoma. I wish you'd tell our viewers uh, a little bit about your early years uh, in the fishing industry growing up and your family life in that regard out in Maryland. Sure. Uh, the, uh, I was born on a small island, uh, Tillman, Maryland. Uh, uh, the island's about three miles long, uh, about a half mile to a mile wide. Uh, it's approximately 40 miles south of the, of the uh, uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge on the eastern shore of Maryland. The island itself was chartered back in 1608 uh, oh. by Captain John Smith on one of his voyages. Uh, it eventually uh, was owned by Matthew Tillman, who was the uncle of Colonel Tench Tillman, who was aide-de-camp for General uh, George Washington during the Revolution. <laughs> so uh, it's a lot of history. A lot of history. Uh, yeah, back there as well. Uh, well, when you were growing up, uh, what is the approximate population of Tillman Island? At that time, it was probably around 300 people. Wow, all and, in the fishing industry? Yes, most all of them were in the uh, fishing industry, which has changed over the years. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I started working with my dad on the boats when I was probably eight or nine years old. Doing what? Uh, calling oysters. Uh, helping bait crab pots, uh, baiting trot lines to catch crabs, uh, whatever little job he had, then I would do that. Uh, we were taught at an early age that uh, uh, hard work uh, was important. Uh, it also would help uh, saving, would help get through hard times because there were a lot of hard times on the water as well. Uh, yeah, you, I guess your, uh, your payday depended on what you caught. Ab absolutely, uh, absolutely. And that was, that was an exciting uh, uh, thing about living back there because uh, what you caught depended on the season. Uh, as an example, uh, in the spring of the year, uh, wasn't many fish, wasn't many crabs. Uh, you really, it was very difficult to make a living. So you use those times to maintain your boat, to, uh, to get the fish nets ready for the summer and fall, uh, to do those things to prepare you so you could make a better living come summer and the fall of the year. Well, there came a time, uh, did it not, when you were actually piloting the boat? Oh, yes. Uh, when, uh, when I was about uh, probably 12 to 13, uh, I actually uh, operated the boat uh, during the summer. My dad actually fished the crab pots. He would pull the pots up. I would run the boat. So I've got a lot of experience for many years operating boats. Once I got old enough and strong enough to pull the pots myself, because that was all manual labor, then my dad operated the boat and I pulled the pots. So I had the hard job at that point. The easy job was running the boat. And of course, that prepared me to eventually run the, the boats here on the uh, Oklahoma River. Well, now, for how long did you uh, actively engage in the family business? Uh, just during the summer, vacations, while I was going to school. Uh, even during the, uh, my uh, two years, I went to a junior college in uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, during those two years, I worked on a uh, seining crew back there uh, catching fish. And uh, at that time, there was approximately uh, seven or eight crews of seven to nine men. So it was a, a pretty large population that were seining. Uh, today, there are none, oh. simply because there aren't enough fish to, uh, uh, for the for the Fished out, crews. I guess. Huh? That's fished out, uh, you know, because of uh, uh, diseases in the water, uh, uh, just for many, many reasons. Yeah. Uh, now, your whole family, including uh, for generations back, were involved yes. in fishing, were they not? Yes. Uh, my dad, Captain John Cummings, and my mom, uh, Helen Louise Burphy Cummings, they were both from 
uh, commercial fishing families. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, my uh, great-grandfather on my mom's side, he and two brothers actually sailed a sloop from Ireland to the Chesapeake Bay. So that uh, that the, was the beginning of uh, our family tree back there. Well, uh, in about a minute we've got in this first segment, uh -huh. uh, tell us how you got to Oklahoma. Okay, I sure will. Back in 1972, I was working for Wilson Foods Corporation uh, in Federalsburg, Maryland in the poultry division. Uh, they made the decision to consolidate all of their national headquarters here in Oklahoma City. Uh, actually, they were located at the Lincoln Plaza office complex down on Lincoln Boulevard. Mm -hmm. uh, we were one of 14 families in the uh, uh, poultry division that actually moved to Oklahoma City. Uh, that was my wife, uh, my daughter, Lisa, and my son, John, who were just going into elementary and kindergarten, so it was a perfect time to move. Uh, we heard about a small town, small college town called Edmond, Oklahoma, <laughs> which is not so small anymore. Yeah. Uh, we ended up buying a home right down the street from Orvis Risner Elementary School so the kids could walk to school. And the idea was to be able to sell the home in four or five years and move on. Uh, that was 37 years ago. The kids had grown up, moved away, and we were still in the same house in the same neighborhood. Well, uh, we love Edmund. Uh, well, we're glad you're okay. here. We're Thank glad you. you made that move. We're out of time on okay. this segment. Let's go to a break. We're talking to Captain Les Cummings, and we'll uh, be right back. Most of the artwork that I produce is with colored pencil and watercolor. The subject matter that I use is, of course, Chickasaw. Most of my themes revolve around family and um, really that foundation that has been a part of Chickasaw life since ancient times. The Chickasaw Nation is a matriarchal society. You've got one lady, she's probably the oldest member of the family that everybody goes to and that everybody reveres. That is something that every woman can look forward to in the Chickasaw Nation because they are extremely important in the family. Maybe one day <laughs> I will be a matriarch. I think this is probably the secret to the success of our government is that we still have maintained that idea that family is the most important thing and that uh, we must uh, minister to the family first and then all other things will fall into place. Home values are down in some states, but not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's home values have increased 4.2% during the past 12 months. Unlike some states where home values have decreased as much as 20%. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. There may be real estate problems in some states, but there has never been a better time than now to buy or sell a home in Oklahoma. One of the most affordable states in the country, Oklahomans are buying and selling homes every day. And an Oklahoma Realtor can show you how. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. Welcome back. We're talking with Captain Les Cummings, a uh, uh, captain of a uh, Devon River boat uh, here on the Oklahoma River. Uh, Les, uh, when we broke, we were talking about uh, the fact that you did have been on the water all your life, and now you're in landlocked Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, but you've made your way back to uh, back to, to the, the water, water again. Yeah. Tell us about the the Oklahoma River uh, generally, what you do sure. on it, and uh, and the boats or boats that you sure. command. Sure, sure. Uh, the uh, Oklahoma River, as uh, a lot of us know, is really a result of the uh, First Maps initiative. Uh, the funding from that initiative uh, actually enabled a seven-mile stretch of the North Canadian River to be dredged, and three dams were installed on the river, one at Eastern Avenue, one at about Walker Avenue, and the third one at uh, May Avenue. 
uh, the Walker Avenue and May Avenue dams also had locks installed so we could transit the entire seven mile stretch of the newly named Oklahoma River that was named after uh, Oklahoma, obviously, and that's the portion of the river that goes through the city itself, that seven mile stretch. Uh, the uh, 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 the uh, dams uh, themselves were actually needed because the riverbed actually goes up some 18 feet from Eastern out to Meridian. So in order to keep that water and deep enough, yeah. yeah, we had to put in three dams in there and it's, uh, it's worked extremely well. Uh, the boats themselves, we had three of those. They're uh, all Devon boats. They're, they're named Devon. Named yes. Devon. Yeah. They were uh, actually built in Albany, New York by the uh, Scarano Boat Works uh, that's well known for uh, building boats uh, for a river uh, passenger uh, type work. But uh, the first boat was delivered in November of 2007. That was the Devon Discovery. The second boat was uh, delivered in March of 2008. And the final boat, that was the uh, Devon Explorer. And then the uh, Devon Pioneer was the last boat, and that was uh, delivered in June of 2008. Are they basically identical? They're basically identical. They're 65 feet long, uh, approximately 14 feet wide. They draw about three and a half feet of water. Uh, they all have two 200 horsepower John Deere diesel engines. Wow. Uh, they're air conditioned and heated, depending on you know, the, the, uh, the weather. Uh, very nice seating inside uh, with uh, tables and the tables can be reconfigured you know for the type of operation that that we need to uh, that we need to run so uh, there's uh, again there's also nice very nice seating outside uh, that on the bow of the boat around the uh, uh, wheelhouse where I sat and a lot of people like to come out on the bow of the boat mm -hmm. so they can see the river and the dam and I actually see the operation of the locks when we mm -hmm. go through the locks as well. Well, so, let's, let's, let's do this. Take, yep. a, take our viewers on a trip down the sure. Oklahoma River. We've got sure. some uh, pictures that we're going to call up. Here's the first okay. one. Tell us what we're seeing here. Okay, here we uh, see old Captain Les and uh, this is uh, Jackson Smith who is uh, one of our deckhands. Uh, each boat has a captain and a, deck, a deckhand. We actually have five captains uh, that uh, operate these boats and we're all trained on all three boats. So any of us at any time could be called in to operate any of these boats. Well, and now you had, of course, substantial background right. in this, but you had to get some certification, did you? Know? Absolutely. Uh, it's a, a minimum of a 50 ton U.S. Coast Guard license. That also means that we can take up to 50 passengers for hire. And how many passengers would this Devon Pioneer uh, hold? Normally uh, between 30 and 35 comfortably. Uh, we can actually take up to uh, 40, 45, but that would mean a lot of standing room only. Uh -huh. uh, we do have uh, over 50 life jackets aboard, so uh, we're prepared for uh, 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 up to 40, 45. Ease my mind, you've never had to use them. We've never had to use uh -huh. those, and it's like I tell everyone, the river is only six or eight feet deep, and <laughs> if we did have a problem, I doubt if our feet would get wet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at the next, uh, sure. next picture as we're uh, heading. All right, which we are heading uh, west. We are heading west here out to the first dam at, uh, at Walker Avenue. Is, uh, that the, uh, or is this the bridge? That, that would be Walker Avenue Bridge that, uh -huh. we, uh, that we see there. And then you can actually, uh, in the background, see the dam in, uh, in back of that. Uh, this is the, my actual view from the That's what wheelhouse. See. That's exactly what yeah. I see. And the people sitting around the bow of the boat mm -hmm. on the seats there. All right, let's take a look at the next picture. Sure. As we're progressing down, aha, we yeah. see a structure yeah. here. Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to ask you on yep. the right hand side. There's uh -huh. concrete wall mm -hmm. with kind of a brown line across mm -hmm. it. What does that brown line represent? Yeah, that uh, that tells us how much water is going to come in to the lock itself to float the boat up. So this is a lock? This is a lock that we're looking at, yes. Uh, so I have to actually navigate the boat into that lock and uh, then I have a remote control. I'll press that remote control and then it'll put it through a sequence and I think we have some photos of that as well. Yeah, let's take a look at the next. Uh, 
what are we seeing here? Okay, this is a, a photo actually looking aft or uh, in the, the stern of the boat. So this is after you've gone into the lock? Uh, this is after we've gone in and we've tied the boat on to the side of the lock. Uh, we tie the boat on at, at the stern. And when I press the remote control, the first thing that it does is closes the gate behind us. And that keeps the water in the lock. So when the water starts coming in, uh, it allows the boat to, uh, to float up. To All right, the, let's look at the next uh -huh. picture. Yeah, this, uh, uh, this is a photo of the water as, as it's actually coming in. Once that back gate closes, there are three hydraulic rams that lift gates at the bottom of the lock. And water actually comes in uh, through pressure. There's no pumps involved at all. Mm. It's all water pressure. Once the water in the lock gets as high as the water on the upside stream or side of the, the uh, dam, then the front gates will start. So to what open. we're seeing uh, to the, the top water. of the picture are the front gates, and to the uh -huh. left of the of the picture at the top is once again the water line. Right. You can see all the water bubbling in from the. Uh, uh, from the gates that's coming in from upstream. Okay, let's take a look. Once we get enough uh, water in there, there and the go. gates open, you're on your way again. Yeah. Uh, then the front gates will open and then we'll untie the boat and then we'll navigate the boat on out and then continue our run uh, out west. Now let's focus uh, real quickly on uh -huh. that little uh, concrete uh, to the, about the mid, very wall. center of the picture. Yeah. That little concrete wall coming out there that uh, just looks like a sliver of concrete. You sure don't want to run into that, <laughs> I take it. No, uh, unfortunately in the uh, summer uh, there's lots of south winds, strong south winds. So I'd be blowing on the picture from left to right on the That's picture. correct. That's correct. Uh, and that has a tendency to want to pin us or pin the boat on the uh, uh, on that uh, north side. So the captains have to be very careful. They have to uh, have enough speed on the boat to keep that boat moving so the wind doesn't push it sideways. Uh, with all the glass and everything that's in these boats, they have a tendency to want to go sideways. So we really have to be careful. Well, this has uh, completed our trip. Let's look at the last picture. Sure. Uh, and there we are. We've there docked. We yeah. And what are we seeing here? Now, this is the uh, dock at uh, Meridian Landing. This is at Southwest 15th, uh, just east of uh, Meridian. And these are two of our boats at the, uh, at the dock there at okay. Meridian. Uh, very good. Uh, well, let me ask you this away from the pictures now. Uh -huh. uh, we just have about 30 seconds left. Uh, you can take a trip, uh, our viewers can take a trip on the Oklahoma River with advanced reservations, I take it. Right. And they can have private parties, business meetings, and the like, anything Absolutely. that uh, they want. And yes. I guess food and beverages can be made available. Yes. Uh, we have uh, uh, the ferry service. We also have uh, Friday and Saturday night sunset cruises. Cool. Uh, as well as uh, facilities for business meetings aboard the boat as well. We have two uh, high-def TVs with computer connections for uh, DVDs and PowerPoint presentations, so uh, uh, we can do it all. Okay, just real quickly, uh -huh. how, how long does it take to go from Meridian to uh, downtown? Regatta. Sure. Or regatta. Or, or vice versa. It takes an hour and 15 minutes. One way. One way. Okay, well, we are right. out of time. Well, I wish we had another hour okay. and 15 minutes. <laughs> Les, uh, Captain Les, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking us on our excursion uh, up you. the Oklahoma River. Sure. Uh, you're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. It's time to meet the new people in power. The people responsible for our energy future. It's you. It's me. All of us together. From now on, we're, we're the, the people, people in power. og &E will supply the power. It's how we apply the power that counts. We've got to use electricity smarter. Wiser. Cleaner. Better. So we've got to be informed, equipped, prepared. Committed. From now on. Look, nobody wants to waste energy. Nobody wants to build new power plants. Nobody wants to pay more for electricity. But nobody wants to give up their way of life. We don't have to. If we just use positive energy together. I'll take advantage of off-peak hours. That means cutting energy use from 1 to 7 every day. Every day. I'm going to sign up for more and more wind power. We'll take advantage of the high-tech tools coming soon from OG&E. and og and &E can't do it alone. It's you and OG&E &E working together. Find dozens of ways you can help at OGE.com. A positive energy future is in our power. Together. <laughs>
wildlife comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. We're back. Thanks for uh, joining us, and thanks to uh, Riverboat Captain Les Cummings for joining us. We're really pleased uh, that he would spend his time taking us on that uh, visual trip up the Oklahoma River. A couple of websites I want to call to your attention if you're interested in learning more about the uh, river cruises, uh, www.okrivercruises.com, and of course our website, theverdict.tv. Uh, we sure are pleased that uh, you have joined us today. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.